Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for May, where we cover top takeaways from Google I.O. And we have seven topics today, so let's dig in right away. When we started Firebase in 2012, it was just a database. Then in 2016, we relaunched Firebase as a full platform for app developers. And now we're evolving again, adding more features and more generative AI. So we have a new logo again. Love the update a lot, or maybe not so much? Let me know in the comments. Firebase has always been known for its NoSQL databases. But over the past few years, we've seen a healthy ecosystem of SQL-based backend services spring up too. With Firebase Data Connect, we're bringing PostgreSQL to Firebase 2. That's right. You can now connect your Firebase app directly to a Postgres database hosted on Cloud SQL. With Data Connect, you define your data model and the queries that you want to allow in a concise language based on GraphQL. Data Connect then generates a Postgres database in Cloud SQL, an API server that controls access to the data, and strongly typed SDKs for your mobile and web apps. And when you update the schema or queries, all of these are kept in sync too. With Data Connect, we reimagined app development on Firebase from the ground up. So join the waitlist for the gated preview. Firebase App Hosting is a framework aware serverless web hosting solution that manages everything from the CDN to server side rendering. You set it up once and you roll out to production with a simple Git push. You can quickly ship Angular and Next.js apps with the security and scalability of Google Cloud. App hosting apps are built with Cloud Build, served on Cloud Run, and cached in Cloud CDN, and it integrates with many more cloud services. Best of all, app hosting is available on Google Cloud Terms of Service. Get started with the link in the description. Firebase GenKit is an open source AI integration framework that makes building sophisticated AI flows easy. With GenKit, you compose flows that use patterns like RAG by connecting libraries and plugins with access to powerful AI models, to vector stores, to evaluators, and more. You can call many models from your code, use Zot Schema to generate strongly typed data, integrate multimedia models like Imagine, combine them into custom tool definitions that you can then use in your .prompt files. You can run GenKit AI flows locally and debug the input and output of each step. Click the link in the description to get started. So GenKit helps you build server-side AI integrations. But sometimes you want to harness the capabilities of Gemini directly from within your client-side application. Well, our new SDKs for Vertex AI let you do precisely that. You can call the Gemini API directly from your mobile and web apps, and they're available in Kotlin, Swift, Dart, and JavaScript. These SDKs are integrated with AppCheck to help ensure that the calls come from your application code on a legitimate device. So check out the docs to get started. Gemini and Firebase helps developers by swiftly delivering answers to questions about Firebase products and features. At I.O., we've made Gemini and Firebase generally available, and we expanded it to include AI assistance in Crashlytics. So now when you click into an issue in Crashlytics, you may find a Generate AI Insights button. You either get an explanation of the cause of the issue or some other type of assistance, and you get links to the relevant documentation. Gemini and Firebase is available at no cost until July 30, so check it out now. So, your new app feature is code complete, and it's been working well with early access testers. You're ready to launch it to all of your users. But what if it doesn't work for everyone? How can you quickly respond to issues during rollouts? Well, you can do that with our new Feature Rollouts workflow in Firebase Remote Config. You can perform targeted or incremental rollouts, and with the integrated monitor, you can make educated decisions on whether to proceed or to roll back. The monitoring dashboard shows real-time metrics like user engagement and app errors. So check it out in the Firebase console today. Those were all the updates we have for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Frank, or Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.